Hey y'all, today baby, today baby we are cooking, okay, I know some of y'all, y'all been playing in the kitchen, but honey we cooking today, alright, I'm going to show you how to make some butter pecan cornbread, did you know butter pecan ventured outside of ice cream, yes it does, we're going to do some Cajun wings, corn pudding, and some greens with smoked turkey now the first thing we're going to start on is that butter pecan cornbread y'all this is almost like a dessert cornbread but it's not so sweet that it's in the cake realm at least in my opinion now y'all know sister mabel had to come out on the scene y'all she been a little low-key but we bringing her out today I'm going to put in some butter flavor shortening and I'm going to set her in the oven um, at 375 degrees while I prep everything else. I'm going in with some pecans or do you say pecan? Okay, let me know in the comments. I say pecan. I'm going to chop them up until they're a, you know, medium mince. Then I am measuring out a cup and a half of milk. Now this whole milk is slightly soured, okay, which is safe for baking, but not safe for fresh consumption. I'm going to put in about two teaspoons of vinegar so that this will turn into buttermilk. Now y'all know my man Jiffy, okay? We go way back like a Cadillac, okay? So I'm gonna add two boxes of Jiffy and then I'm going to use my whisk just to get out a few of the lumps. I'm gonna go ahead in with my pecans first and mix them up with the dry Dry batter because I want them to get coated so that they don't all just clump up or float to the bottom. I'm then going to add a pinch of salt as well as my homemade buttermilk and a stick of melted unsalted butter. If you use salted butter, then leave out the additional salt. I'm also adding in three tablespoons of brown sugar, two eggs, a little bit of vanilla extract, and about two and a half tablespoons of honey. On second thought, maybe this is a dessert cornbread, okay? But it does taste good, all right? If you're someone who doesn't like sweet cornbread, just act like it ain't cornbread. Act like it's dessert, and then you be good to go, okay? So I'm going to mix this up really well, making sure that I've incorporated everything, and then I'm going to bring Sister Maybe out. Y'all, she piping hot. She angry and piping hot, okay? Now I'm going to add my cornbread batter, and you want to hear that nice sizzle. Look, if you don't hear that sizzle, that means your cast iron skillet ain't angry, okay? It ain't hot enough. I am going to get all of this batter out. I got my spatula up in there, and I'm working that bowl, okay? I don't want to leave none of this goodness behind. I'm going to stick this in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. You want to check it until a toothpick comes out clean. If it starts to get too brown before it's ready, then put a piece of foil on the top. Are you all ready for this brown sugar bourbon glaze that we're going to make for this cornbread? Yes, this is taking us to new levels, honey. I'm adding some butter, brown sugar, and of course some bourbon in my pan. And I'm going to heat this until the brown sugar starts to get bubbly. Then I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of honey. I like this because it gives it a little bit of a stickiness, but you could leave it out. And I'm also going to put in a pinch of salt. Now my cornbread is ready. I know this because my toothpick comes out clean. I'm going to poke a few holes around the cornbread to help the glaze absorb. Then I'm going to pour over all this glaze. Now you do want to make sure this glaze is warm. It's going to help it spread a little bit easier. And of course you want to put this on your cornbread when it comes straight out that oven, all right? I'm going to use a brush just to get this everywhere. And y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something. Okay, you can't let the greedy demon try to get you, okay, because you need to let this cornbread really cool all of the way before you cut it. I didn't do it, okay, the devil tried to get me today, all right, because what you're going to see is that it's hard to get out of the pan. The pecans make it slightly crumbly until it's all the way cooled down, and I knew that, okay, I knew that, but see, I, I wasn't doing right, but it's okay because the cornbread still tasted absolutely delicious are you guys going to make this recipe it is so easy mm, and oh so, so good and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe if you are loving this content okay y'all pair with this i am going to do some cajun wings now pair with a little rice we getting down to some eating business do you hear what i'm trying to tell you I'm first going to make my seasoning blend. You can use whatever type of Cajun spices you like. I'm gonna use a salt-free Cajun seasoning, some Creole seasoning, and you know this is basically like seasoned salt. I love to put a little bit of lemon pepper with Cajun seasoning, that really is good, as well as some smoked paprika. 
not to be confused with regular Rika. Okay, these different people. Then I'm going to add some garlic powder as well as this is on tropical. A good swap for this would just be like complete seasoning as well as a little bit of dried thyme. I'm going to mix this together and now you have a good seasoning blend for some chicken. I've already washed and cleaned about two and a half pounds of turkey wings. I went ahead and just left that tip on because y'all I'm going to nibble the mess out of that. I'm going to add some olive oil to help my seasoning stick and then I am going to generously put all of these spices over my chicken. When you see this, some of y'all are going to think, that's too much seasoning girl, I don't know, it's too much. But you have to remember that the only thing that had salt in it was that Creole seasoning and that Saison Tropical. So this is definitely not over salted and of course you can season to your own taste. When I have everything mixed together, I'm then gonna just let this rest for about 10 minutes to marinate. As the chicken cooks down, I want the pan juices to really mix with some veggies so it can make a really nice gravy. So I'm gonna add some finely chopped up Trinity. Y'all, this is a little bell pepper, a little bit of onion, a little celery. Then I'm gonna go in with the Pope. Y'all, that's some garlic. And then I'm gonna add some bigger chopped vegetables. Those I want to be in larger pieces. You don't have to do this, but I already had some small chopped vegetables, so I feel like I should go ahead and add them. Then I'm gonna add in my chicken wings. Now I thought, okay, your girl thought I can get all this chicken up in this pan because y'all know I ain't trying to be doing dishes like that. And I do not have a dishwasher, so I have to wash every single dish by hand. Can you believe it, y'all? So I tried to get all of them in here, but it was just too jam-packed. So I ended up taking out a few of them and I just cooked them on a separate pan in the oven. But you still got to do right, even by the small pan. So I went ahead and added the veggies and the parsley and all that good stuff to this one too. I have a can of cream of chicken, just one can. I am going to disperse this whole can over all of the chicken. Now, I want a little bit of a gravy and I want some flavoring on this chicken, but I don't want this to become like a cream of chicken chicken does that make sense i really just want it for a little flavoring so if you want a lot of that cream of chicken flavor you should end up adding about two cans maybe even three cans but i just added a little bit to enhance the flavor of the drippings and to make a little bit of a gravy i want to cover this and i'm going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for 30 minutes initially. I want the chicken to release some of its juices and I want the vegetables to get soft. I'm going to give my small pan the same treatment as my other one. So this is whatever is left from that one can of cream of chicken. I'm also gonna cover this and put it right beside it in the oven. If you do not want to cook wings, I know in some places wings can be kind of high. You can also do the same recipe with legs and thighs. Y'all know I don't even play with breasts, but I mean, technically you probably could do this with some chicken breast as well. Now, it's been 30 minutes and my chicken is looking good. I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to help a little bit of a gravy form. And then I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to baste my chicken. I'm going to put this back into the oven uncovered for 45 minutes to an hour. It's really gonna depend on how brown you want your chicken and how much of a gravy you want. If while it's cooking, you feel like the gravy is getting too low, just add in a little bit of water as it cooks. This was about 30 minutes into the cook time. I went ahead and flipped my chicken over. I definitely have to have my wings browned on the back side. And I also sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray to encourage that nice color. You can also put this on a low broil for about the last three minutes to encourage that nice color as well. And I'm going to do the same to my small pan of chicken. However, I'm gonna add a little smoked paprika on the back to get a good color on those. Y'all, this chicken was tender. It was juicy. It had a delicious pan gravy with some rice, cornbread, green beans. Mm. Yes, Lord, we are eating, eating honey today. Let me know if you're going to try this recipe.
Next up is some old school green beans and potatoes. You know how your meemaw, your big mama used to make this. Honey, we gonna do this today, but I'm gonna make this quicker than she did. Because y'all know the old folks used to be having this cooking for about five, six hours. I don't know why they was cooking it that long, okay? We're gonna speed it up. First off, we are going to go in with a smoked turkey wing, one pound with a little bit of better than bouillon, and we're going to pressure cook this for 30 minutes. Y'all, y'all need to use the modern appliances, okay? Be delivered from doing stuff all day on the stove, okay? We don't got to do that no more, right? So I'm going to cook this until it's tender. It doesn't have to be falling off of the bone because it's going to continue to cook with the green beans. Okay, as you can see, it's nice and good. You can also use turkey leg. You can use turkey tail, whatever turkey you like. Okay, then I'm going to add some butter and a piece of fat back into my pot with an onion. I'm going to saute this until it's a little bit translucent. Now, I know some of y'all don't play with the pig, okay? Just add a little bit of extra butter instead. Then I'm going to put in a teaspoon of minced garlic and saute this for about 30 seconds until it is nice and fragrant. I'm going to go in with some of my salt-free Cajun seasoning and then this Tony's Spices and Herbs. This one is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more um, spicy than the other one. So if you use this one, just be mindful of that, okay? Then I'm going to add in my turkey wing with that pot liquor. Okay, that's the broth that's going to add a good, good flavor to these green beans. I'm going to cover this and let it come up to a boil. Nice little simmer before adding in some more white pepper. Now for my green beans, y'all, some of y'all going to be there snapping all day. But some of us are going to get them pre-prep pre green beans from the bag and we just going to snap them in half. Y'all, I, I I'm tired of snapping green beans. I will do it, but I ain't trying to do it, okay? Y'all know how the old folks be having you on that porch after church, snapping green beans straight from the garden or straight from the man that, that sell them down the street. Honey, I'm trying to be delivered of that. So all I did was take these green beans and I snapped them in half. I'm going to let these simmer for about 20 minutes. Now, I don't like my green beans to be super duper soft. If you like them really soft, then you can simmer them on the lowest setting for about 30 to 45 minutes. I want my you know, green beans to snap back at me a little bit. While my beans were simmering, I prepped some baby potatoes. I washed them real good. I cut them in half and then I placed them in some water so that they would not get brown. Then I'm going to add them to the pot and this, these are gonna take about 20, maybe 25 minutes to become tender. You may need to add a little bit of water. You can just check it. I'm going to just simmer these on the lowest setting until the potatoes are fork tender and they've started to absorb that seasoning. Let me know in the comments, do you like your green beans a little bit soft or a little bit more on the firm side? Which do you prefer? And do you typically make this with the smoked turkey or do you be using that pork, you know, that smoked pork, that pork jaw? Okay, what do you typically put in your green beans? And if you do something different than my recipe, of course, I want you to share it because I always love trying you guys' suggestions. At this point, my turkey wing is really tender, so I'm going to take it out and I'm going to shred it with two of my forks. I want you to get a little bit of meat in every bite. And as a bonus, I'm about to nibble on this turkey bone. We going to get all that meat clean. Honey, I like to call that a chef snack. All right. Then I'm going to add my turkey meat back to my pot. At this point, you can taste your broth, taste your greens, you know, adjust the seasoning to your own taste. I decided that I needed a little bit more of that Tony's spices and herbs. So that's what I added. But you might want to put a little more pepper or whatever it is to your pot of green beans. You all know it's your kitchen and you the boss of your kitchen, honey. So let me know, how does this look to you? Are you guys going to be making this recipe? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna 
show you how to make a small corn pudding. My other recipe was really big like for a big family, but this one is more suitable for just an everyday weeknight meal or a small family. So I'm gonna put in two eggs and a fourth of a cup of half and half and a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch. I am then going to put in vanilla extract. Now I just shook it in, okay? Y'all know how the cooks do, but I estimate it's about a teaspoon as well as a fourth of a cup of sugar. Now my grandmama used to put so much sugar in this, but mine is really more on the mildly sweet side. So if you like yours to be sweeter, you could even put up to a half of a cup. For a little spice, I'm gonna add in the cinnamon and I'll end up putting in some nutmeg as well as half a stick of butter. I'm gonna use one can of creamed corn and one can of diced corn that I have drained. And then I'm gonna mix this all together. Now, after I put everything together, I gave it a little taste. Yeah, I know it got raw egg in it, but I did give it a little taste, okay? And then I just went in with a little bit of extra nutmeg. I'm always surprised by the amount of people that tell me that they have never tried corn pudding. Super sweet corn pudding was literally my grandmother's go-to dish for any family reunion or gathering. I cooked this at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes until the top was brown, but the middle was jiggly. You can serve this warm or you can serve this cold or room temperature and it'll still be great. I hope you all have loved this meal idea. Pair this with some rice and this is a wonderful soul food Sunday meal. Let me know if you make this. Your family is just going to love these recipes. I know. You guys know I love you and Jesus loves you and I'll see you next time. Goodbye and God bless.